we have a very special guest, and his name is Nicholas Bryce. Nic Nicholas Bryce believes that we can create our vision of heaven on earth only by working together. He graduated in 2011 with a bachelor's in applied arts. Every Monday, he hosts a Merkaba light body activation at the Universe Building in Detroit, Michigan. So, Nicholas Bryce, it's been long overdue. Thank you for coming on the podcast with us today. Hello. <laughs> am, am, oh, I am live. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I like that picture in your background. Yeah. Shows you're going full force. <laughs> Yes, so you do light body, Merkaba light body activations, as I, I personally like to call them, um, every Monday. Uh, could you explain a little bit more about what what Merkaba is or what Merkaba light body is? Yes, uh, so the Merkaba is, it's actually broken into three different words. Uh, each of them meaning different things. The first one is uh, mer, which is to uh, give description of our body. Uh, ka is to give description of our our spirit, and then ba is our chariot of well, just chariot basically. I was going to say, some people say a chariot of fire. I'm sure they just attach that to it. But. So that's that. Why would, they, why would they add a fire to the chariot? Uh, or chariot of light. It's just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but that's, that's basically how that goes. And Merkaba is deeply rooted in the histories of most major religions it's not really talked about it, it almost is like before the religions even uh, really formed you know it was there so um, hmm. yeah and it's this is something that we can access in all of us it's you know a part of us and that and that I found really fascinating in, you know, looking through, you know, different information to try and learn more about higher consciousness. And, you know, something that has the description of a light body vehicle and literally the description is to be used as your vehicle of ascension. It just sounds like it's basically, you know, spelt out loud and clear for you, you know, so, you know, I was really blessed to have ended up, you know, learning more about it, and, you know, just happened to, you know, be able to, like, be a part of an event, put together an event, and just happen to have somebody teach that workshop, and then experiencing, you know, that specific style of practice through breath, and this is something that we access through our breath, or at least from, you know, um, the way that you practice engaging this, this part of ourselves. And, and it's, it really is life changing. Like, as soon as you experience it, it's pretty clear that uh, there's blatantly something more out there that you don't, you know, you don't really ever experience unless you, you know, just happen to do that or do that. I don't know how you can necessarily just accidentally, I mean, if you're breathing, maybe it'd be into, like, intuitive if, if you did it. I'm sure you could just stumble on it, but, I mean, it, it like, changes your life instantly, and from that point on, I know I'm, I'm I might be getting a little off and sort of talking about my own experience with this, but no, it's exactly what we need is to to hear 
what you have to say about it, and you kind of covered what I was going to ask was how you uh, how you stumbled upon it or what made you look more into it. Did you have a, a personal experience that yeah. really drove you? Uh, or? Right, like, and then that first time you do it, it's like, I can't believe this isn't out there for people to experience. How do you even stumble on upon this? So, like, immediately after experiencing that, I felt, you know, the need to be able to find a way to spread that kind of experience. And just over time, felt the need, you know, the void, just even the, you know, this void yeah. that existed where it needed to be filled to where people are, you know, f facilitating this experience for other people. Yeah, and you do Merkaba Mondays uh, every Monday in Detroit. And I was curious, um, almost every time I talk to you, you tell me, I just had this, the craziest Merkaba activation. <laughs> um, could you explain a little bit about the what what an activation is or what it does to you? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and I think I feel so so um, so the shape of what a Merkaba looks like. I don't know. Can people see me like visually or? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> all right, my screen turned off. Oh no! Well, okay, we can so. see you. I wanted to show you, this is a, a three-dimensional drawing I just did, and it's a little bit more illustrated, but it shows what the Merkaba looks like uh, three-dimensionally. So this thing is around our bodies, and that's the thing we're engaging when we do this practice. So, And then it doesn't just stay stationary like that. It actually rotates where you know each of these triangles here are pyramids combining into each other and they spin in opposite directions so it creates this wheel and then it just gets faster and faster as you put more or bring more energy into it and then we engage that with our breath work that's where we're pulling the energy from around us that's in the air into it and then so that's what, that's basically that Oh my gosh! That is, that is um, and then you asked me what some of my personal experiences are. Like as you do that, as you increase in the breath work, you actually begin to experience over time a sensation that is like comparable to the idea of some kind of, you know, um, building energetic force within you. And physically. It may feel like your arms falling asleep, that sensation that goes through your body. And it, it is a little shocking to begin with, uh, if you don't know what it is even. If you do know what it is going into it, you may be a little bit more open to you know, experiencing what it, what it has to offer. But, you know, as you do this, go through this process of um, breathing, there's different rates in which we breathe to do the practice. Uh, so like in the more accelerated breathing you're putting a lot of you know air into your body you may begin to feel just like your whole body literally vibrating. Like you don't just you know this isn't just in your head you're literally sitting there like <laughs> You know, and then you may think, it's like, oh, could it be from, like, the breathing? Maybe I'm hyperventilating or something, but <laughs> it's like you begin to, over time, feel this energy move through your body in an extremely physical way, and you may be led to, you know, whole different postures or positions while doing it. And I've I've had just these incredible experiences. It's hard to even imagine that, you know, I can be as grounded as I am, or maybe I'm not. I feel like mm -hmm. I am. After having these experiences, because, like, and then, and then the craziest thing about it is the more that you do it, so I'm just speaking from my experience right now, though, the more that I've engaged in this practice, 
going out into, you know, going away from the exercise, you know, getting up, walking around, doing something, you can consciously engage this thing. When you think about it, after you've had it happen, or maybe it's after you do it for a little while, um, you can bring that, like, physical sensation of energy right back into your body, like, at will. And you're just like, this is like, you know, I'm a super, like a, like a superhero or a, <laughs> or like a, or a god, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> like, so, I, I wanted to touch on on one thing. I read that for the Merkaba light body, ascended masters use it to move in between the yeah. uh, dimensions. Yeah. So that's the theory, and you know, physically. Oh, this thing. <laughs> Things are falling on him. Mercury <laughs> retrograde. I know. I'll just take this down for the time being. <laughs> for those, this is um, the Joe Louis fist that's in downtown Detroit. It's a symbol of our city here in Detroit. It's crazy. Um, it's actually from a Freemason uh, uh, rich where they lay the cornerstone of a building, the uh, pyramid that's holding this fist up uh, is representative of, you know, the structure they use to lay a cornerstone of, you know, whatever mason structure they were, they were doing. So Detroit has a lot of Freemason history, and it's just like right out there in the open, you know, they're not really hiding, <laughs> hiding what they have. <laughs> So, let's get back to the Ascended Masters. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I I think we're all gods, anyways. That and we need to awaken and realize this. But when you feel these, like, energies going through you, it's and and at will with your consciousness, you're like right now. You just. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, so can can it's we? Like, it's pretty blatant. So I'm not addressing your question though. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if if we if we accessed if we accessed our Merkaba light bodies, could we ourselves move into lower dimension or a higher dimension? It's it's controlled by your consciousness. So I think. I don't know, and again, this is this is something that just recently kind of coming upon, especially myself, but in the past, as far as I'm aware, a couple decades maybe, people have been coming onto this, or coming back to this, and in theory, this is what they practice, you know, our, our way long ago ancient an ancestors just knew how to do this, it was just something that, you know, you would just sort of know about it was wasn't even anything maybe real special to them. Yeah. Uh, um, awesome. I want to chime in and give you some praise, Nick, because as a uh, like a teacher in general, um, I know it's hard for you to find the right words, kind of being live and on the spot. But at Frequinox, we actually there were like I don't know, 15 of us, and we all climbed up into this room in a barn and decided we were going to do your workshop. And I must say, I usually don't do a whole lot of meditation. I do a lot of talking to guides and dealing with spirit, but I don't get into meditation or breathing techniques. And you walked all of us through it. We were all kind of together at really close quarters. <laughs> and I, uh, I went with it, and I said, okay, I'm going to try to do this to, to my best ability. And with your guidance, I was actually able to do it. I felt like we had all been lifted up. CeeLo started just wooing with excitement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I literally had an orgasm. He was just you, like, yes. Completely. You get, like, really excited and into it. Like, because it it's like. Because yeah. he, was, he was so optimistic about it. And, like, you instantly smiled because you knew that you had helped not just him, but all of us, like, get there at that point. <laughs> and it was, it was a good feeling. And I personally. I felt like I had was able to to travel through some dimensions because I I speak with a lot of God in different ways and different things, but 
I'd actually got to be able to like visually see myself in the Merkaba. I had this cool like rotating triangle, ridiculous shape going around, and I I felt like I was able to talk to a couple angels. I think I even said that said it at the time. It was like Hanuel and and Ariel and Jophiel, and a couple of them were just like spinning around and. Just the way you walked us all through the workshop was really beautiful, and I just wanted to give you some praise for that and let people know that what you're doing with Merkaba Mondays is like a beautiful thing. And I do think you can travel to answer your question like through the different dimensions with it. And that was like one of my first times, so I was like blown away, like, whoa, this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy to hear other people's experiences because it varies yeah. per person really what happens so like it's you know it's good it's good to hear you know especially what you just said right there because it'll just continue to help us build and understand this thing because <laughs> yeah we're just like going going for it we don't know like where the vehicle is gonna take us we gotta like remember how to use it or just sort of accidentally or whatever, however you do it. It's yeah, so um, Could you explain how you uh how you trained yourself or taught yourself to remember the different breathing techniques? I see you working with those a lot. You uh you like to separate yourself from the group and go into your like breathing space. Can you explain anything about that for us? Yeah. So it's over a process of <laughs> well, it, it all depends on the individual, how they'd like to do it. Uh, I teach it um, from how I have I came to know it through uh, three different periods of breathing and over time accelerating, you know, the rate of breath uh, per part. So, um, but, you know, I think when you're ready to do it, you can just sort of hop right into it. You know, if you're practiced enough or you feel comfortable, you can just get into um, this chronic breathing where it's it's like ha 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 ha. You know, it's it's, it's rather intense. So you you do want to you know build more into that if you're practicing. And I'd recommend you know if you decide to practice with this. To really, you know, start with slower breathing um, in through your nose, out through your mouth, and as you, ex you know, increase in your breath work, using, you know, more just in out through your mouth. Uh, there's a YouTube video that I don't know. Can we like guide people to the Three Days of Light Phoenix YouTube video? Um, I somehow, maybe like at, with the post or something, if people were interested. It's funny you mentioned that because I was just getting ready to say I would love for you to put out a video with some like a meditation or just like the technique or walking people through it because I think that would get a lot of people interested. In um, I think you once told me that if we could get everybody to do a macabre activation at the same time, we could just like ascend to a whole different level, or we would all like start to see them, really notice them. So it's it's we so have like video uh, instruction. Yeah. <laughs> Both that? No, no, I totally agree. It's you know, you experience it, you you know right away that there's something more to reality and then that just forces you to question all kinds of other things. And yeah, if everybody were to do it there would just be such a, I don't know, there'd be a lot of questions, but just, you know, you'd, you'd want to know more about it. <laughs> so I think, yeah, just the chariot of ascension, and if we really want to get somewhere with our, like, awakening experience, it just seems like something incredibly fundamental to to look into, you know, and experience. So. I may be straying off, you know. I just, 
talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're all talking. Uh, I just I just posted uh, the video um, on the on the chat, so everybody can watch that video that Nick is talking about. And uh, that's uh, that's we we both learned this uh, technique at the same time. Uh, that's where we met at Three Days of Light, and. Uh, I posted if anybody could figure out who it is at the bottom of the screen, we'll win 10 points. So hopefully we'll see if anybody can win that. Um, continuing on, so um, I was watching this this video, a short little video about a movie, and it had Jodie Foster in it, and she was this astronaut traveling in this vehicle. And it was built exactly like a Merkaba, and she ended up traveling through different wormholes. And so I'm still curious about traveling through different dimensions in this Merkaba light body activation. Um, do you think it's like a it's like something physical almost, like a like kind of like an OBE? So I I think we'll learn more as we go and experience it. Uh, Already from some experiences, and I was telling you last night, I had probably, you know, the most powerful one yet, and I don't know who watches your show, but I don't know if I can endorse how I, like, specifically practice that time, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I felt literally, you know, my reality... You know, like like I was explaining to you earlier, it was like I had spun around in circles for a few minutes and then was walking around. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Um, somebody had a question that they had in the group chat, and I wanted to make sure that we that we kept up with it. Oh, good. Um, I lost my train of thought. Do you want me to go ahead and ask this question that we got? Um. Oh, let me just finish. I just remember. Okay. Uh, so, I was I was standing uh, over my computer for a little bit, and I was just listening to some music, and I felt, you know, such like strong presence on both sides of me. Sort of when you feel like on. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to like word things without being too uh, explicit with what I discuss. <laughs> um, but you, f you felt like, you know, there was this strong presence there, and it was, it was so surreal. You know, and I felt like I was able to at least intuitively understand, you know, what, like, why those things were there. But I still feel like, okay, <laughs> it's just a stepping stone, you know. Maybe eventually, as you practice more and more, you know, you sh should be able to really maybe see or possibly go somewhere else in return, you know. So you can go ahead and ask that question now. <laughs> But basically, what you to just sum up what you were just saying, you, you, it's like a vehicle, almost almost a vehicle to to consciously astral project while you're somewhat awake. Because you said it was like a feeling you can go wherever and all, come back, and that's what I took from it. <laughs> yeah. And um, let me see if I can find this question. It says, since you first started, was there any change in dream state? Do you only do Merkaba meditations, or do you still partake in other forms? Yeah, I've. Well, yeah, I've I've been meditating since 2011, and it's kind of come and gone as frequently, here and there, as like more a part of a, a regular practice. Um, but I do meditate. Just normally, I suppose. Uh, I've noticed, though, after really have been doing the exercise for a period of weeks, you know, at least like once a week, that when 
a, a couple different times this, this happened. Never had it happen before, but I would lay down to go to bed or take a nap and would go somewhat lucid and still have my consciousness in whatever environment I was in. So I'd be there, like, laying on the couch, and I'd start to be able to sense, like, different energies. I'd feel like people coming and trying to talk to me. Or and then I'd start to imagine, like, basically I, I would be going lucid, like, in the room. So I'm, like, consciously, like, leaving my body just about. And, and then... Almost like if you've ever experienced uh, dimethyltryptamine, that you know you go and you get these colors, and I don't know. I guess that experience can vary, but basically, consciously being able to go see this like tunnel of color. This happened a couple times, and then it would just like drop you off in some lucid reality where you like still have the same consciousness that you laid down with. And you're like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, Nicholas Bryce, the floating head. Uh, yeah. You can't remember how to yeah, say you're going to float again right now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, can I ask you to, to talk briefly about the dream that you had with the woman with blue eyes? Oh, man. Yeah, that I feel like had to do directly with... Uh, this practice is I had, you know, started this Merkaba Monday or weekly practice of of doing it. I had the stream, and it was really bizarre. It was like the dream was switching back and forth between two different dreams, and it would sometimes just be like a part of the other dream or like the two dreams mix, and it was really disturbing. And I couldn't understand how to make it stop. And I, it was such a traumatic dream that, you know, just that experience alone, I'd remember it. But near the, the last part of it, there was this lady. I remember sitting in this chair, like, in the further corner of the room. And, you know, as I'm laying there freaking out, this lady, she's been able to maintain, like, being there within a bunch of these, like, reality shifts and I'm like who is that lady like in the dream and she like gets up from her chair and walks over to me she's has this long gray white hair yeah I think I'd mentioned blue eyes and and I'm you know stressing out from the dream and I remember I was actually you know kind of shocked that she had got up and walked over to me she she looks at me in her eyes, and she reaches out to grab my hands and looks at me just for this period of time. And she tells me to study the Kabbalah. And at that point, I think the dream could have kept going, but I, I, I was so excited that there's such, like even in the dream I was excited that she had said that. And coming back into waking reality, it was like, you know, I just decided to go back. I, it was like a choice. I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm <laughs> wake up, and I woke up, and then was instantly started talking about it. Nick Nick Malnick, he said, "Who put who put that lady there? <laughs> who put that lady there?" <laughs> That's brilliant. It's, I think uh, earlier when I was researching Merkabas to make that article. Um, I think it even said something about the Kabbalah in it, but I didn't really focus on it. But if you have it, you should definitely look into that. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I have some knowledge that in Kabbalah they do talk about Merkaba, and I still really haven't broken into that a whole lot. But you know, I I feel like a lot of what we're doing as we're studying could help to. You know, lead us to a better understanding of what Merkaba is. Yeah. So we have uh, probably time for one more question before we we're gonna take a break, um, and we'll do the the audience questions after the cosmic energy forecast. Um, but 
I just uh, I wanted to ask if there is anything else that you you wanted to share, uh, either about the Merkaba or yourself personally. Um. Yeah, it's it's something that I I think everybody, you know, if given the opportunity, needs to to really try this, and it can be a little off putting. You know, the idea of it or the practice can be a little exhausting, but you come out of it, you know, just so full of bliss and happiness. And something we're here to do is, is you know, wake the world up and give, you know, kind of raise our, our consciousness and awareness. Hmm.